All right, let's keep going. Under Create Maya Nodes, over here in the left hand side of the Hypershade menu, select 3D textures this time. Now, you'll see that your work area is starting to get a little, a little crowded under, in your hypershade menu. So the cool thing is, is you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out once you've clicked within that work area. All right? Now, under the 3D textures, on the left-hand side of your hypershade menu, I want, to click, I want you to click on the granite button. All right, now select your polygonal sphere in the perspective view panel again. Hold down the right hand mouse button on the marble icon in the work area of the hypershade menu and slide the mouse as you hold the button to assign texture material to selection. Then render that frame and see what a 3D texture looks like. Okay, now this is the really fun part. You can use these stock textures that Maya provides, and they're great, they're fine. But one of the best bits about Maya is that you can, you can create any texture, any bitmap yourself using Photoshop or starting with vector art and exporting it if you'd like, or anything that already exists, you can apply to your polygonal objects as well. So that's what we're going to do. So I want you to do this the easy way, all right? I want you to go to www.google.com, and I want you to make sure that on Google, the images section is ticked, okay? And I want you to search for the word textures, and about a thousand new textures will come up. Well, what I want you to do is download one of those textures that you like, and put it on your hard drive somewhere where you can find it, okay? Now... Look, you're going to have to really follow carefully now because this is tricky. But once you get to know it, once you've done it once, you can do it a million times. All right? So uh, one way to clear out your work area if it's getting too complex in there, and, and, and let's do that now, okay? The work area area of your hypershade menu, right? I want you to right-click in the work area section and you'll see the word graph on a menu appears okay I want you to slide your mouse down there while still depressing the right hand button and move over to clear graph and release that will clear your work area alright now let's go and start applying our own textures to our own objects okay so click on the Blin icon in the surface section of the Create Maya Node section of your Hypershade menu. Alright? Now, when it appears over here in the Attribute uh, panel, I want you to rename that new Blin icon. I want you to rename that Texture Map. Okay? Now, you have to really watch carefully. Because so over here in the Attributes panel, okay, you're going to see the word color and that's usually where you set the color for your blend but if you move if you look over to the right of the word color okay you're gonna see a little small checkerboard button just off to the side of the color button okay of the color section in the attributes menu I want to click on that little checkerboard button okay now what happens is the create render node panel appears, as you might have noticed, okay? And I want you, in that menu, I want you to select the Textures tab, all right? <sighs> now, under 2D Textures, in that menu, I want you to click on the File icon, all right? You'll find it in there, it's a little square one, okay? Now, when you look over on this side of the screen, once you've done that, I want you to make sure that the File 1 tab is selected in the attributes menu okay now if the file one tab is selected you'll see a little tiny folder icon next to the words image name up here all right in the attributes panel a little tiny folder icon you click on that folder icon and that gives you access to your hard drive where you find the texture that you downloaded from the web or the one that you've made, hopefully the custom one, alright? And uh, 
uh, uh, your, your, your texture will then appear in the work area of a hypershade menu. So just as we did before, right click on it with your sphere selected, release the mouse button when you're, when you're hovering over assign material to selection, all right? And then render the frame and see what it looks like. All right. Now look, the hypershade menu has about a million things in there. All of them work essentially the same. They all appear in the work area. You create different, what you're doing is creating different attribute nodes for your object. But right now we don't have to understand exactly how that works. I just want you now to go through that, that, that menu and see what's in there. Because you'll find some interesting things in the Create Maya Nodes menu. And one of them, of course, that I'm not going to cover, that I want you to figure out on your own, is the lighting section. All right, now you can do that some other time. Right now, our perspective view is illuminated by default lighting. But if that proves not to be good enough for you later, as you get better at this program, go into the lighting section and you'll see how that works as well. But if you know basically how the hypershade menu works, all right? You can figure out just about anything that's in there. Now, we haven't talked about saving your work, so I'm going to quickly do that. All right? You might want to save that nice thing that you just made. So, just to basically save your scene, which you're working on, you go up to File, of course, at the very top of the screen, and click on Save Scene As. And as soon as you do that, your scene will be saved to the default file network that Maya sets up when it's loaded onto your computer, okay? If you want to get more saving options, you click File, Save Scene As, and slide over to that little box icon on the edge of the column, okay? And that gives you some more file, uh, uh, some more saving options. Now, if you aren't happy with where your project, your project saving file structure is on your hard drive, you can change that by going to File, Project, and Set, and a new menu comes up with all sorts of specifications so that you can uh, prescribe, prescribe the entire saving file network for Maya anywhere you'd like on your hard drive. But by default, Maya will put it somewhere to start with, okay? And that concludes the Hypershade menu. Now, if you got through all that on one go, well, my compliments. But if you didn't, just go over it a few times until you get the hang of it. And you should be able to pick it up fairly easily. Because the exercises that follow in, in uh, Tutorial 6 will rely upon you being, being able to do these things. So learn it, uh, become familiar with it, and experiment. And I'll see you in Tutorial 5 coming up.